Oh, okay. Oh, he's yeah. being, oh look yeah. at that. Yeah. Everybody's running fast. I mean, oh, ah, shoot. Ooh. It didn't land on your toe, did it? No. Yeah, okay, careful, good. man. <laughs> shut, up shut, up, shut up and sit down. down. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Rolltech, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, American Family Insurance, Miller Lite, and Aaron's Company. What is up, Wisconsin? From the Inside Wisconsin Studios, Trevor Thomas, and back from literally two weeks at the World Championships in Eugene, Oregon. Oregon or Oregon, J.A.? Oregon. Got it. There is no Oregon. There is in Wisconsin. Then, then, then that's mispronounced, which is too bad. But yeah, <laughs> so like I, I even have the shirt to prove it. Uh, and I wore that not to show off, but I wore that because that brings us sharply into focus mm-hmm. with uh, our guests on this episode. And as you know, I would do track and field all the time. Yeah. And if, if, if you didn't remind me that we should every once in a while talk about somebody who, I don't know, plays for the Packers, I'd probably completely forget that. Uh, But I think it's special this time. I've been out there and a a great showing by two great Wisconsin athletes, uh, Kenny Bednarik in the 200, like super, super fast, like this kind of fast. Yeah. And then and then uh, Zach Zymick, who ran to the University of Wisconsin and into the decathlon and put together two great days and 10 events. And both these guys ended up on the uh, on the medal stand. Zach has a bronze medal, which is extraordinary from his career. Kenny, again, a second straight year with a global medal, a silver in the 200 against some really tough uh, competition. So just, it's terrific. And, and we were able to twist their arm. Oh wait, no, I was able to twist your arm into getting them on the show. They're more than willing, uh, but a great show um, uh, by both of them and part of a record U S medal hall at a world championship. So, um, just great guys, great contributors, and, you know, Scotty. Yeah, Scotty. Stay treats. Here we go. I will give you one guess who lined up Kenny Bednarik, a uh, silver medalist, multi-silver medalist, track and field. That was all J.A. Kenny, thanks for joining us on Inside Wisconsin. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. I'm going to start this with a question that I think is uh, should be on everybody's minds. So you just went, you're, you got a second global silver medal and, and you were a few minutes late today because you're still training? Like, take the day off, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, I took a couple – like, after I got the medal, I took a couple of days off there in Eugene. And then um, I got home, I think, like, two to three days ago, and I was just chilling. Uh, originally, my teammates and everybody else were at practice for – I think they've been at practice already, but I had to take an extra day off. Um, but, you know, I got to stay on the grind and finish the season off. I still got a few races to run. Okay, so what what we go through today? What was what was uh, what's on the plan? The workout plan? Uh, today I just ran a couple two hundreds just to get the muscles moving. Um, but I don't usually know what's gonna happen the next day after that. Coach is gonna, uh, you know, he has all the stuff in his head and he doesn't write, like to write it on paper because for some reason. But most of us athletes don't like that because we love we like to know exactly what's going on. Um, you know, like when I was in college, my coach would have a plan and he'd give us a sheet and all that stuff, so we kind of mentally prepared. But he kind of, you know, the day up, he was like, okay, we got this. So we're all like, oh, crap, this is going to kill us or something like that. So, but yeah, today was a pretty uh, easy day. Um, it's kind of at my own pace, uh, three 200s, and then, you know, that was it. I can so tell you, I did not run, run three 200s. Yeah, I did that this morning. That's what, that, ironically, no, yeah. <laughs> that was my morning workout today, sure. too. I ran sure. three 200s. What's it like to kind of, as you move, you talk now, everybody's fast. Because you run in high school, all of a sudden, like, dude, I kill these people. There's nobody on the track should be with me. You get into college and the competition's a little better, but now you step on the track and it's one of these where, man, if I miss a stride, that, that can be the difference between first and seventh. And, 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 and what's it like to kind of move up in that competition and, and realize you belong in that, but also how to learn to compete with that? Um, I mean, like you said before, it's just, 
one little one little screw up, then you know it's the difference between first and fourth. Uh, I mean, you know, just go in and try to, you know, better whatever. Like if you go into a meet and um, you know you have a race and you know you're supposed to win or you're supposed to be with those guys and you end up messing up and you know why you messed up and where you need to work on. And, you know, you, you can get upset about it and all that stuff, but then it's also like, okay, well, I know I belong here, and I know the reason why I lost this race is because I screwed up at this point. So you, you go back into the – go back to training with a positive attitude because there's always an upside. Um, like, for me, last year, you know, was my breakout year because, um, you know, official officially my first pro career um, – year was 2019 and i mean that's kind of like you know coming out of college so i actually don't know if that's my actual first official year and then we had the covid year so you know nothing happened that year so last year for me was my breakout year my first year i consider that my first year mm -hmm. and you know i was i was competing against everybody and i knew i belonged there and you know every time the, the my mindset is every time i step on it stop every time i stepped on the track um you know that's my husky uh i step on the track thinking I should win, knowing I should win. And when I don't win, I know why I didn't win. And, you know, I just go back into the uh, the next day, just, you know, it's, hey, I got to fix this because, you know, I don't want this to happen again. And there was a few races that I lost last year where I knew I should have won. There was one in Paris. There was one, I mean, I feel like I could have won. I mean, congr you know, Andre ran his butt off, but I feel like I could have done a little bit better with being relaxed with my shoulders and, you know, all, that, all those little micro mm -hmm. things would have, been a big difference for me. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, technique is very important in this sport. Um, but yeah, I do have fun, you know, competing against these guys. I mean, we all talk to each other and you know, once we step on track, you know, it's just a survival of the fittest. You said it's a Husky. It sounds like a poodle. Uh, <laughs> let's let's see. He doesn't, he, he doesn't sound gigantic. I, Okay, oh, he's yeah. not, oh look yeah. at that! Yeah, Jesus. beautiful dogs. I like that. So uh, you're fast enough now that you've got two global medals. When you were you're, you're running around a track in in Rice Lake, or even if you're running around the neighborhood, did you think, "Wow, I could have an Olympic medal. I could have a World Championship medal"? Uh I mean, being in Rice Lake, no, I didn't really think about the whole global stage until I was running. I mean, when I was younger, I remember watching, you know, Rio and. Um, you know, you've seen Bolt, Justin, and Johan running, you know, as a little mm -hmm. kid, I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to be an Olympian. But I feel, I feel like most kids have dreams like that. You know, when you're younger, you're always going to have those, you know, big goals, and you're going to say, I want to be this, I want to be that. Um, but then when I got into, uh, you know, middle school, high school, it really wasn't a thought um, about being in the Olympics. Like, I was focused on football. I think in middle school and high school, is more I want to be an NFL player. Um but then once I got to college and I just, you know, blew up those fast times in the, the junior college stage, um, you know, that was kind of the time where it's like, okay, like I have an opportunity here. I'm one of the fastest people, you know, when you get a world lead, you're like, wow, like as of right now, I'm one of the fastest people in the whole world in this, you know, particular event. So, I mean, at that point that I knew then that I wanted to go pro, like once I, I mean, honestly, I didn't even know, being pro was a thing because I know most people don't know, um, you know, you're an actual pro, you got meets besides, you know, Olympics and Worlds. Um, but I didn't even know that until I was at that level. Um, so pretty much in, um, you know, college, that's when I was it solidified, okay, I'm going to go pro. Um, mm -hmm. That was my goal. And then I ended up, you know, getting it done. Uh, the bucket hat looks good on you. Oh, uh, the headband is what people know when they watch and you come out of the track. So... Mm -hmm. Like I, like, I watch uh, Rod Benjamin, Michael Norman, right? They kind of got their matching We're USC guy headbands. It gives them superpowers. Mm -hmm. Yours is a different kind of a deal. Where did it come back? Uh, where did it come from? And then how is it you decided to kind of lean into that and make it Kung Fu Kenny and the whole kind of uh, persona around it? Yeah, Kung Fu Kenny has a set of values that I love. Um, you know, dedication, humbleness, uh, um, you just, just a bunch of other uh, – values that I love to instill in my daily life in the track. Um, I mean, you know about me, like I'm quiet, um, but I go onto the track and make sure to compete and I get, you know, the job done. I mean, that's I feel like one of the reasons why people don't really know me much because I'm not that loud and, you know, 
crazy guy with a lot of energy. You know, I go in there, do my business, and I leave. And then I do it again every single time I step out on track. Um, so, I mean, they just had a set of values that I love about it. And uh, with the headbands, you know, the goal is to always have a different headband for each race and each and every race. That's why I always have a new one. Um, and I'm trying to be able to get uh, some new, like, prints on it to make it look look really cool. So, um, yeah, that's why I have a, a few headbands. And, you know, it just, like, has a set of values that pertain to me. So John talks about growing up Green Bay a lot. And I'm curious, Kenny, as you grew up Rice Lake, do you have that Wisconsin statriotism that we talk about? Like, you know what it means and the values that you share from being from Wisconsin. And I guess, do you connect with that when you're at all these different places running? Do you look for Wisconsin people? or How does that feel? Uh, I mean, I don't look for them, but we end up finding each other. I always get, uh, always meet somebody like, oh, yeah, I'm from Wisconsin. I was like, oh, really? Uh, but, yeah, just a lot of hardworking people up there. And, I mean, that's what I am, just hardworking every time. Like I said, I get on the track, I, I work my butt off just to be where I'm at. I mean, especially this year, uh, it was totally different with uh, the toe injury. Um, I Honestly, the first two uh, months of training was – was uh, it was unbelievable. I've never had to work my butt off so hard just to get back to where I was. Um, but, yeah, just a lot of hardworking people up there. And, you know, every time uh, we find each other, you know, we have a few good conversations. You know, we got them cheese heads, the pack, Packer uh, – Packer fans. I'm a Packer fan. I love Aaron Rodgers. Um, I'm not really a Milwaukee fan. I don't really watch basketball like that, but I mean, I've seen Giannis play here and there, but he's a phenomenal athlete and I, I love to, uh, you know, I love that he's uh, playing for Milwaukee. So you, you mentioned you had to come back from a toe. I don't know that everybody realized that you broke your toe in December. Yeah. I don't know if you want to let the people know how you did it. I don't think it's embarrassing, but it is, it's not, it's not yeah. your typical sporting it, injury. Yeah, it's not a typical sporting injury. Uh, December, mid-December, December 17th or 12th, I forgot which day exactly it was, but I ended up fracturing the big toe of mine on my right foot. Um, was doing some handyman stuff, trying to put a coffee table together, and, you know, I dropped it on my toe and it chipped the side of my foot um, in the top of my toe. So I had to deal with that. I had to take seven weeks off uh, of just doing nothing, was in a boot, walking on the side of my leg. And it was, uh, you know, I, no one loves getting injured, but you don't realize how important all these small little things are until you, you can't use it. Um, so you just had to, you know, I had to balance everything back up. Like I said before, take seven weeks off and just let it heal. I mean, even now it's uh, not 100%. I can bend it, but it's like, you know, not 100%. It's like slightly like this. Um, but, yeah, just getting back, it was – just a crazy journey. Um, I, I was just lucky to have the right people around me, have the right coaches, right doctors, all that stuff. Um, and I'm hoping by the end of the year, after I'm done running, that it, I'll be able to bend it 100%. But yeah, it took a while. It's very painful when it initially happened. I honestly thought I was, I honestly thought I was okay because I used to think, uh, I mean, being young and everything, I used to think I was invincible. So like, sure. I was like, okay, I sent my coach a picture and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll be good. You know, I'll be a practice in a couple of days, and then we got um, an X-ray, and I was like, "Oh crap, <laughs> not good." <laughs> yeah, not good. But yeah, it was a, <laughs> a little crazy experience. But I'm just lucky to be able to get through it. Ex explain to Trevor here. Uh, I think probably most of our audience knows, but we're gonna do it anyway. Um, so the silver medal is unbelievable. But explain to Trevor how hard it is to make the U.S. team in the 200 because that's that is the deep end of the pool right there. I mean, yeah, it's – I mean, honestly, to make the team – I feel like for most of us, when we get through trials, that's like our Olympics because everybody's running fast. I mean – oh, ah, shoot. Ooh. It didn't land on your toe, did it? No. Yeah, okay, careful, good. man. <laughs> okay. He needs to go away. Um, but, I mean, like, for example, like in the 100 meters last year, I ran 989. And, I mean, not many people have actually ran that fast, and I got fourth. So in the 200, it's, you know, nine, 1993, uh, I think that was Noah's brother. He ended up getting fourth. So, I mean, no, he ended up getting fifth. I got fourth. Um, but, yeah, it's just everybody's running fast. You know, overseas you have guys that running a 19.9 or a 19.8. Like, they're breaking a national record over there. But here in the U.S., everybody's running that, that fast. So you got to make sure you're on your A game. And, I mean, for trials for us, it's literally – I mean, most of us athletes – 
say like all the stress is on trials and once we get through that and most of us are relieved because we know okay you you uh you know got most of the people in the most of the fast people in the u.s and half of them are not going to be there so you got you know x amount of people left to worry about all right one more for me and then i'm sure jay's got one to wrap up here i'm curious you ever been to lambeau field man yeah i went there twice uh i forgot there was one year where um we had a comeback win against the Bengals. I think that was in 2018 or 2017. And then um, there was another time where we had like a halftime show. I was part of that. We had to like throw the ball as far as we can and catch it. I was a part of that. So I've been there twice, but I'm trying to get back up there again. Be awesome. There was a great comeback game against the Bengals where they put in um, Brett Favre a few years ago. I don't know if you remember that. And then, they never, then he never <laughs> no, got no, the no, comeback. No. Um, I'm a that, little man. too young for that. I, I, I understand that. Um, so I, I mean this in the nicest way. What does a kid do in the summers growing up in Rice Lake? And I say that not because Rice Lake some sort of tiny community and there's nothing going on. But still, Trevor, in, in Green Bay, we used to drive around on our bikes and follow the street sweepers. So it's not like we had a ton of stuff going on. But <laughs> like what were, what were the lazy, hazy days uh, in, in Rice Lake in the summer? What did what, you do hanging out? I mean, earlier in middle school and, you know, just like a normal kid, uh, finding your friends, hanging out with them, playing basketball, playing, I mean, playing video games if they play video games, um, you know, going on a little vacation, trying to stay out of trouble. <laughs> but um, once it got to the high school, honestly, for me, I mean, you know, I was going going and training every single day and trying to just get faster. We had, um, you know, USATF, you know, the uh, Junior Olympics. So I was competing in that. So, mm -hmm. you know, right after the year was done, I was still running. Um, I think, uh, was it my junior year? I also went to um, some some junior, not junior team. It was something at Brooks PR in Seattle. I ended up going right. to that. So I, that's when I first met uh, Hunter Woodhall, Elijah, Elijah Goodwin, uh, Tyrese Cooper. No, not Tyrese Cooper. Tyre, uh, what's his name? Tyrese Moulton, and then um, uh, there was another kid, Sean, Sean Hooper. Um, I think he ended up getting injured, so he's not really running right now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, that's when I first competed against the guys that from the south that were, you know, top notch, you know, right on my level. So it was a humbling experience um, being able to compete against guys at my level. Um, but yeah, I was just training. Every single time, every single every single uh, summer, just trying to get better. So I'll touch on two things here, quick, uh, Trevor. Uh, Elijah Godwin, who's really good, once backed into a javelin, nearly ruined his career. This is true. And Hunter yeah. Woodhall's an amazing runner. He's an amputee runner and and runs on blades and is is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. So I asked that question, Kenny, so I could get to this one before we 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 take a quick break. You're in Rice Lake. You talked about maybe the Olympic dream, but did you ever think? that track and field could take you to these places you've been telling us Rome and Rabat and Tokyo. And I don't know if you're going to the Monaco diamond league, but like, yeah, I'll be there, but like you step on this track and, and suddenly the world has opened up to you. Oh yeah. It's that's the one thing I love about my sport, just being able to travel and just, you know, see things that nobody else had. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. um, you know, thinking about going to the Olympics and all that stuff, um, I didn't really think about that. And then it was like, oh, we're going to uh, Morocco as your first meet or Ostrava. I'm like, oh, OK. Like, you know, it's, it's just crazy. But I, I do. That's the number one thing I love about my sport, just being able to, you know, see different types of cultures, see how everything is, you know, how the system is over there. It's just a, an amazing experience to be able to have the opportunity to do that, because not most people, especially at my age, are capable of doing that. Um, but yeah, it's just I love I love my job. An episode of Inside Wisconsin dedicated to uh, medal winners. Double Z is next, and then a really cool lightning round with J.A. We're back in a minute. Inside Wisconsin. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, the University of wisconsin Platteville, Roll Tech, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, American Family Insurance, Miller Lite, and Aaron's Company. Helpful critiques, ideas, great stories, people we should know, the great bar in your town, the fish fry that you want to know, the fish boil, anything that you want to reach out to us with, we are happy, we are here. You can be the inputters. We're here to listen. J.A., how old is your grill? 
Uh, I don't know, a couple, three years. It's all right. A couple, two, three years. Yeah. Yeah. That's two, it. Three, two, three. Charcoal? Yeah, not, not too bad. Yes. No, I know no, we talked about this. What is it? Line. Here's what I want to know is yeah. it's grilling season, right? Mm-hmm. So, and, and this is, I don't know that I'm looking for everybody's recipe, right? But it, okay. So we're drilling, we're grilling out. So you have to have the Miller Lite while you're grilling. Have to. Are you a guy that boils your bratwurst in beer prior to the grilling? Or do you just take them straight? Because I'm trying to think of, you know, like the 101 uses for Miller Lite. I, you can drink it. You can boil stuff. I use it like WD-40. I, 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 I use it around Swing the house on, on hinges, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> um, but every once in a while I do that, and I, I, I feel like I'm like, should I be doing that with my beer? Like I should be drinking it instead of boiling it. And But anyway, are, are you that way with your, with your brat? I've only ever boiled them in Miller Lite. I think it's a no-brainer. And then, of course, okay, yeah. so you boil them in Miller Lite. You yep. take them out of there. You put them on the grill. And then what do you do? You bring them back. You have to bring them back. You put them in the Nesco with the Miller Lite and the onions. Okay, starving. You're hungry That's already, great. aren't you? I'm going there now after I read this. Next time you're getting ready to enjoy cold ones with your crew, go to MillerLite.com forward slash inside Wisconsin. To find delivery options near you, or you can pick up some Miller Lite pretty much anywhere they sell beer. It's I got Miller at a time. Power Shop the other day. Did you? Okay, yeah. good. Make sure if you're going there to celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Why don't we get, you know, go to MillerLite.com forward slash inside Wisconsin and send somebody beer instead of flowers, send them Miller Lite. There you That's go. That's a good idea. We are back inside Wisconsin between segments with two guys that are much faster than John and I combined. Uh, it is time for the ever popular top five list now presented by Wisconsin's best engineering school, the University of Wisconsin Platteville. UW Platteville offers an affordable engineering program and its graduates stay here in Wisconsin. That's the whole idea. They drive innovation at top companies right here at home. Find out more at uwplat.edu slash engineering. All right, J.A., we have engineered. See what I did there? A top five list this week. Super fun, and I'd like to point out that you said off camera, this will be fun, Trev, because you can't be wrong for a change. <laughs> I'm excited for this. I'm, I am just that cruel. So people yeah, are going to see right. that with me that I'm really quite that mean. But this one's inspired because Lambeau Field just posted um, uh, the, the kicking between Bayern <laughs> Munich and Manchester City, Man City. Uh, I sent the boy home. He likes the Man City, so he went and stayed with Grandma, went and saw the game, survived the lightning, the thunder. Maybe, yeah. Do you think the Lord was telling us, how about no more soccer at Lambeau yeah. Field? <laughs> I'd like, guy to, think so. I'd yeah, like the, to think there was some divine intervention. I'm not going to, you know. I don't want to play soccer at I don't want to go too far down that road. But anyway, the football so, gods were angry. Got it. Which made us okay. So we were going to go give me some, give me the top five events that you've been to at Lambeau Field that weren't a Packer game. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the premise here. You have to have, you have to have been present, right? So, like, I know Billy Joel was there. I wasn't. So that I can't put that on my list. Mm-hmm. Um, it has to be, it has to be an event. It can't be, oh, I went to the pro shop and bought a hat. Or, you know, I went to to learn how to drive a standard transmission, a stick shift around the parking lot. So they got to be legit events. All right. Okay. I'm going first. Yep. Bring it. Here we go. Because my number five, watch John's face. Ready? Here's my number five. Yeah. It was the kicking event. Good for you. That's fine. You can be there. I I literally thought you were going to tell me I was wrong. That was all right. We made it past. Honestly, that was kind of cool. I mean, it was weird to see no G and no goalposts. It didn't. I didn't like it. Let's get back to football. You know who else didn't like it? The Lord. Yeah, clearly. Uh, number four for me, the return to title town after the Aaron Rodgers Super Bowl. That's how I differentiate them, by the way. There's the Brett Favre Super Bowl and okay. then the Aaron Rodgers Super Bowl. Number three for me, Kenny Chesney's first concert here. Uh, highlight of a Lambo thing because that also was right after the Super Bowl, Super Bowl victory. Mm-hmm. Uh, the players were in lockout. And so we're all like, who's going to show up with the trophy and so on? There he is walking on stage. Mike McCarthy has the trophy. It was Boys of Fall. I may have cried a little bit. It was a really neat moment. Do you know that song his uh, went out last night? Yeah, we went out last night. Yeah. You know that song? 
I do. Yeah. Like I swore we wouldn't do. Yeah, uh, I I got a buddy that helped him write that song. But anyway. No, of course you do. Three (laughs) degrees of cheese. Three (laughs) degrees of cheese. There you go. Number two, it was the frozen tundra hockey game 2006 the badgers in ohio state man that was cool i think it was snowing even that was that would be on my list of things i missed at lambeau yeah that was awesome um here's my number one and i don't know if it will ever be beaten other than and this doesn't qualify because it's a packer game but this one was really cool it was when brett Favre came back and filled the bowl for his packers hall of fame induction uh, you may remember when Favre came back, mm-hmm. they clearly only had X number of seats in the atrium, but that was one of those events that everybody wanted to be at because we all forgot about everything that happened. And so the bowl is full and mm-hmm. out walks Brett Favre. He gives a speech. John, I've been to a lot of Packer games as you have. That was the loudest I have ever heard Lambeau Field that day. That was, that was what? That was August or something, right? It was towards the end. Hot. Of the- yeah. Stupid hot. Yeah. So really cool moment. All right. There's my top five. I loved it. There's no argument. I do that to draw the distinction of I was there when they did his number and they put it up in the file, which was Thanksgiving. And it was pouring rain and freezing. Mm -hmm. And it was sideways when he came. Poor Bart Starr out on the golf cart. I was there too. Fantastic. All right. What's yours? All right. Here are mine. One is, is uh, one is uh, at number five is one that's happened several times. And if people are in and around where I was back uh, when they had the Shopco fireworks there every summer, 4th of July, you went out the big fireworks show, which is now downtown over the river, which Mm -hmm. makes more sense. Uh, But it was always (laughs) sponsored by Shopco, which I don't even know. I think those are gone now, Uh, but the Shopco's are done. The Shopco fireworks were a big deal. Okay. Hmm. So that's at number five. Uh, So my sister, was in the Northern Step Drill Team, which was a marching group in Green Bay. And they had this drum and bugle show at Lambeau Field, and my sister got to march in Lambeau Field. So this was a big deal. Your sister, yeah, I'm probably 10 or 11, tops. And my sister got to march on Lambeau Field. These are things they don't let you do at Lambeau Field anymore because they realize that the NFL is now a billion, quadrillion dollar business. And we got to keep, you know, now you can't even, you barely can get close to it on tours before they did all kinds of stuff. You've been on Lambeau Field, right? Yeah, I have. Okay. Number three, this is another one thanks to my siblings. Uh, my my brother used to play his high school games at Lambeau Field. Wow. At Green what? Bay Southwest. So Green Bay Southwest homecoming, and I want to say my brother would have been like 1975, played his homecoming game at Lambeau wow. Field. Green Bay Southwest Trojans out there, they played like uh, like Greenleaf or Greenfield or somebody. But so, I, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, so my brother and sister have been on the field performing. So that's number three. Uh, number it. two, I don't know if this is bending the rules or not, but I'm taking it anyway, was when Leroy Butler was inducted into the Packer Hall of Fame and I got to present mm-hmm. him in the atrium. So that was great getting to present him. That qualifies. I have, been, I have not been asked to present him in Canton. I think he was saving <laughs> that for somebody far more important, but good for him. Like his uh, wife? So that was great, and I can't wait August 6th uh, when Leroy gets inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. Much deserved. And then number one, (laughs) this is going to be crazy. Much like Bayern Munich and Man City, the weather was terrible. But the first really big event they had at Lambeau Field that was not a Packer game was in 1976 when the great comic, great actor Bob Hope did a show at Lambeau Field. And I was there with my mom, my dad, my family, and my grandfather to see Bob Hope perform in Lambeau Field. Wow. And the weather was terrible, and there were delays and delays and delays. And I'm trying to think if I even was able to stay for the show or if they finally took me home. (laughs) Done. Anyway, I was there in 1976 when Bob Hope played Lambeau Field. And all of these, you had to be inside the building because one of the ones that I thought you were going to squeak in there was when you came here to Green Bay and anchored the Packers' 100th season with yeah. ESPN. That was really cool too. That was fun, right? But that was kind of that was ESPN was cool, but that wasn't. I didn't see that as a Packer thing. I was working. These were things I did that I think are amazing. In addition to skateboarding and learning to drive a stick shift and going into the parking lot or going into the pro shop and buying a hat, uh, those that are non disqualifying. But um, 
Of the ones at, that were listed there, the one I wish is I wish I would have been at the Badger hockey game. That would have been so, so cool. I wonder if our guests have ever been to Lambeau. We'll ask them next. Uh, J.A., your mom celebrated a birthday not terribly long ago. We don't need to say the number, but uh, there was a birthday party, yes? And you wrote a speech. Did you not talk? Okay, so A, she was proud of it, or 80th. Uh, oh, good. That's great. The day after Christmas. And B, or is that C, whatever we're up to. No, I did not give the speech. I made my sister give the speech. Oh. Um, because, as I tell her anymore, I said, listen, anymore, if I'm giving a speech, if I'm not getting paid, I'm not talking. So <laughs> even my own family. <laughs> Jeez. So I found it funny. You call me from Connecticut. Yeah. And you're like, hey, all right, who do I need to call over at Festival Foods? I need a birthday cake for mom. It's totally. just, it was awesome right. that you knew Festival Foods had the cake ordering headquarters. Mm-hmm. It's great. You can order them online. Go to festfoods.com slash custom dash bakery. It's right there on the homepage. Can you tell I'm doing it in the, in, the, in the background here? I need to order a cake. You can click cake ordering. You can start your order. They got, look at this, upper crust pies. Fresh donuts, cookies, and bars. Mm, donuts. Donuts. Best foods. Anything they com. can't do. <laughs> no, there's not, including save you money on gas. You can look up more information about gas rewards. That's in partnership with Quick Trip. Free rewards just for shopping. Go to festfoods.com to learn more. Happy belated birthday, Mom. Would you like to know the the the, the kicker to that story? Yes, of course I do. In that we, you know, the, we went to a very nice place and we looked at all their desserts and this and this. And we finally went, nope, she just needs a birthday cake. And we got it at Festival Foods. Did? That's we cool. did. Mm-hmm. You ended up there. That's awesome. What did she have? Do you remember? Just a great white sheet cake. Oh. Name on it. That that kind. Perfect. That's yeah. it. Like what, the one everybody wants. What every birthday wants. Zach and Trevor. Yep. Honest to God, I don't know which one is which. This is. This is absurd. <laughs> One, uh, ZZ, Zach Zymick, has a, a, a world championship bronze medal. The other guy has bobbleheads. Um, but this is, this is shocking. This is actually frightening, quite frankly. Zach, how tall are you? 6'4". Six, four. Six, four. Okay, so Trev, you got him by about four no. inches. 6'8", a little bit. Don't you ask guys, him how much he weighs. I don't want to play that never game. Met. Uh, you've never met, right? No. So, and uh, appa- clearly your parents gave one of you up for adoption. You've been split at birth, <laughs> never knew about it for today. Uh, but I'm so happy we could bring you guys together. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you guys thank for you having me. And, I'm, and I specifically cut my hair about an hour ago, so me and Trevor would uh, be able Appreciate to. Appreciate that. Trevor, are you alarmed at all by all of this? Because I've I, I said, hey, we're going to have Kenny on, and we're going to have Zach. They've got medals for the world champions. Like, cool, I'm all in. I'll, I'll do this. But he's been studying up. But I don't know that he was prepared for this. Yeah, this you said something yesterday via text that we looked a little like, and I started to do a research, and I'm like, nope, I think he's a buck eighty five on a on a bad day, right? Like, how much do you run at Zach? Uh, right now, about two hundred. Okay, good. I got you by a solid eighty five pounds, and I've go. never. Uh, I don't remember last anyway. time it was 200 pounds. Yeah, this is All right. cool. All right, Jay. Now, now we're through that. Let's get to Thanks. the good stuff, dude. Dude, we've made Olympic teams before. We've made world championship teams before. Like, you've worn the colors. What's it like to wear the medal? Yeah, uh, amazing. It still hasn't really sunk in yet because, like you are saying, I, I've been making teams since 2015 while I was at Wisconsin. And uh, to, to finally bring a medal home, at home is uh, very special. So I get a text message the other night, this first time metal thing. It's awesome to bring home, and you're letting guys like J.A. just throw it on over their neck and take pay- – do you not protect this thing like the Super Bowl trophy at some point? I, I was sharing it. I, wa- I, wa- oh. I want everybody who who, uh, who is around me, if they wanted to see it and wear it, and and, and uh, John and I ran into each other at the hotel, and, and uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty cool. You mentioned about, and now this is about Wisconsin, but you said, you know, to win it at home, um, like Eugene to Sun Prairie is a bit of a drive, but still, <laughs> what was it like to compete like that for a guy who's gone all around the world uh, to compete at home, literally in the U S for a global championship. And, and the reason why I, you know, a lot of people, I say home because obviously U S but I've actually competed in Eugene more than I have in Madison. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just more familiar there. I obviously practice every day in Madison, but 
Uh, it, it, it was it was cool. There's a lot of advantages of being at home. Of you know, I sleep in my bed all the way up till Tuesday Tuesday night, and I head out Wednesday. So diets, a lot of the same stuff. Everyone I'm around, my family, coaches, friends. So it uh, it, it it was very easy transition to to hop on a plane and get them ready for the meet. As I start to talk double Z, you're going to figure out pretty fast that I am not the largest uh, educated track and field guy in the room by any means. Now, hear me out on this. We just talked to Kenny. Does one event really, really well. Who led you astray to make you do 10? (laughs) What am I missing? There's all these events that you could meddle in individually, and you're like, nope, screw it. I'll do all 10 at the same time in like two days. Well, well, thank you for that, but I don't think I can meddle in any individual. So I'm just kind of average at all of them. I'm like, if I throw to get ten together, I'm like, uh, maybe I'll meddle, and I did. So uh, yeah, I started. Did. I started in high school, though. I had some high school coaches were saying, you know, you kind of have a talent for being able to do a lot of things decent. So I'm like, I'll try this out. Impressive. Thank you. Thank you. And now once you're in, like you can't get out, right? Like it's a, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a cult, but that, that's a tight little group. Like once you're in there, it's, it's hard to get removed. Yeah, I, I love it. It's uh, the way that, that I train too is so different every day. It's several events. I, I can't, now I can't imagine training for one. I honestly, I, I would just get bored. I think it is, it's uh, a lot of dedication to just do one. So having 10 and having a challenge of all that to try and improve is, is awesome. How'd you become a Badger? I visited a couple schools. Uh, Coach Nutty Comb was recruiting me in 2000 and when I came in 2011. Uh, as soon as I came on campus, I loved it. You know, it was, it was uh, I, I tell a lot of recruits that it, when I came here, it was just a gut feeling. It was just something special about Madison. And my hometown's only about two hours away in Illinois. And I'm like, I, I got to be a Badger. I, I love it here. And and uh, I'm not leaving. Says every person from Illinois. I got to be a Badger. <laughs> got to be. Love it here. And yeah. you stayed, right? Sun Prairie is home. Yeah. Talk to us about that. Yeah. And uh, my wife and I got married in 2019, but we moved into Sun Prairie in 2018. Uh, it's a little bit off campus, which is nice. I drive in about 25, 30 minutes every day for, for practice. So I get away from the college town a little bit, but I'm in some prairie close enough for training that uh, I could be, be able to do everything that I need to do. Straight down East wash. That's right. <laughs> it's great. I didn't know I was with a GPS. Yep. Uh, so after <laughs> you get, you get done and you've done 10 events over two days and now there's some euphoria, obviously, cause we're happy. And, and we see you at the gazebo at the old candlewood suites there, whatever it is. And Eugene and you're <laughs> down in, beer and pizza uh but but when you get done and that that kind of adrenaline wears up like what hurts oh everything yeah i <laughs> my my legs hurt my back my my the main thing was my head like it's just being out there when it's so hot you're trying to hydrate and you just you have the worst headache like the next day and it's it's so tough to sleep like i went to bed after we were out at the gazebo and everything and my I'm, like, I'm i'm so tired but i couldn't fall asleep so I fell asleep for about three hours and then I'm up and, and then, you know, then there's travel. So you travel for about 20 hours and you come home and you're like, Oh my gosh, every, everything hurts. So I uh, hope, hopefully in a couple of days that wears off, but uh, it doesn't need to yet. When do you decide to wear the breathe right strips? And when you, <laughs> when don't you, does the nose just feel good some days? I always wear for the 15. So I've never been a, a great 1500 guy. Uh, I've always had I've had really bad allergies uh, when I was when I was coming into college and everything. So I've had a uh, septum surgery that was in, in both nostrils, and uh, it just it just helps out a little bit. Yeah, everything you can do to breathe a little bit better. I gotta get my hands on one of those. You have to. So you talked about being sort of kind of good at all of this, but not great at any of them. But I feel like then you can bring an appreciation to watching this since you have a hand in all of these. So when you watch this and you watch Mondo vault more than 20 feet, or you watch a guy at 330, or you watch Kovacs throw 75 feet, Anderson Peterson threw the javelin out the back of the freaking, like when you watch those, what is your appreciation for watching the highest end of that? Yeah, I, I study so many of those guys and girls as well. You, you see that they're at such a high level. 
like I was saying before, I can't believe that the, at times they train for one event. Uh, it, it's, it's tough. It, you know, it's, it's one thing that you're doing. And obviously there's so many little details that go into it, but you know, I, I use them to study and I, it's just amazing to see like, some of the distances and, and times that they can do. It's, it's, it's incredible stuff. I texted Mondo afterwards. I said, dude, because uh, he vaulted 621, which yeah. is the new world record. I said, dude, one of these days you're going to come down with snow on you because yeah. you vault so damn high. <laughs> it, it, he, 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 I saw that, that vault on the way home uh, uh, on YouTube. And he, he was smoking that thing. I'm like, man, he just, he's unbelievable. And that's one of your better ones, right? You're like, yeah. what, you're yeah. 555-ish guy? Yeah, yeah. So, he, he, I mean, he's got me by two feet. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. All right, I'm lost. I got to bring it back to something I know. Tell us a story about going to a Badger football game. I love talking to professional athletes who are just dialed in on their sport, right? Decathlon this. And we talked to Jonathan Taylor, and he's like, oh, man, with the Indian this and the running back. And I'm like, that's cool. Tell us a story about how you got lost at a Badger game. That's what we want to know. So the last Badger game I was, was that, was that last, it was last year. And my, my wife is a huge fan of, of uh, going to Badger games, so – when I got to go on the field, my family's there and stuff, and they're like, they're they're loving everything. I I love going to games, but sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I could just sit back and like switch the channels and stuff. So, um, <laughs> I I love I, I love to to go and support and everything, uh, but you know I it's uh, my family's huge into it, so I love to go with them too. Imagine that a guy that does ten things has attention deficit. Says yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, the main, that's the main reason why I do the Catholic night. ADHD and I can't yeah. Fill. We got so, that in common too, buddy. <laughs> would you, because uh, uh, you were there when the, when the team was uh, was good, we're suffering a bit now here and there. But like, would you rather go to a Badger football game or a Badger hockey game or a Badger basketball game? What do you got? I uh, I, I love I love the, the the football games. You know, I, just the amount of people that are out on Regent Street and you know walking around. I lived down down there on Bowen Court by the McDonald's when I was in in uh, college. So. It's just the uh, the amount of fans and people that go, the tailgating that's involved. It, it's uh, it's it's really cool. So I told Trevor uh, I stumble out of the the van with uh, we'd had a rap party, and I stumble out of a van, and I'm with uh, a couple of British guys and a Scottish woman, and just uh, this international crew, and um, and I think uh, no, Dan O'Brien may have left previously. Who also he, he, right, he was right before you guys. Okay. Yeah. Did he come say hi, by the way? Dan, yes, by the way, used to hold the world record and is a gold medalist in the decathlon, Trevor. So mm -hmm. he did say, what did Dan have to say to you? Uh, he, he, so he came up to me. He's like, oh, my. He couldn't believe that I was just sitting out there. He's like, you know, I, I, this, is, this was really special for him to say that. You know, I, I don't come to, to tears often, but he's, he was just saying how happy he was for me. And, uh, you know, we were just talking a little bit, a little bit decathlon, but more of like, just life stuff and, and what, what it takes to, to do what uh, that I did. And obviously what he, he was doing and the path that he set for so many of us now uh, I'll send you the picture. Yeah. We took a picture in the gazebo. So it was very cool. So the gazebo is happening, right? It, this is the happening spot right now in Eugene. Cause it's after hours, but I come out with all these British, uh, these, these folks from the UK, Trev. Yeah. And I ask exactly, where are you from? in Illinois and basically Chicago suburb, uh, by the way, he's the first person ever from a Chicago suburb that just said the suburb instead of I'm from Chicago. Uh, <laughs> but taught the British people something new when I said, Oh, you guys are all fibs. And, and at least they didn't throw anything. Like they all embraced. It's exactly who they are. Uh, now the British people know what that means. How is it you've decided though, that, that you were going to step away from that and stay in Madison and not go back and, and, and be, uh, be on the wrong side of the border, Trev. Yeah. Well, so I'll tell you a story with the, the fib story. Obviously, everyone knows what that is. And, you know, when I'm going to Wisconsin, people are like, you're going to Wisconsin, man. What's going on? But I, I grew up coming up here all the time. I would go to the Dells with my family, go sturgeon fishing. We fish all the time. My, <laughs> my grandma uh, had a little place in Lake Geneva. So I always loved Wisconsin. I'm like, I love this place. Uh, uh, it was easy to, for me to, to be like, I, I'm going to stay in Wisconsin. One of, the, one of the Wisconsin people came up to me when I was at Drake Relays, like, oh, so you're a fish. I'm like, fish? I'm like, yeah, f I'm yes. like, all right, I'm done with this, man. And uh, <laughs> that, when I graduated, it was like, as soon as I graduated, I got a uh, Wisconsin driver's license. I'm like, I'm not, not going to be called a fib and a fish anymore. So I'm one of you guys. 
Yes. Welcome. In. This is, <laughs> you know, what I think is funny is that Illinois doesn't like to associate with Wisconsin unless it's Friday. And then we're all, where are you heading this weekend? Oh, I'm going up to Wisconsin. Well, that's why you have the nickname you do. Cause you drive like, up here. Come on. terrible <laughs> but his driver's yeah. license is good now he's okay better now yeah 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 all right yeah. we're gonna give our producer a run for the bleep money there uh we'll be back in a second really fun lightning round with both double z and kenny in just a bit we're inside wisconsin Not no inside wisconsin is brought to you by baycare clinic blaine's farm and fleet the university of wisconsin platteville roll tech festival foods capital credit union North Star Mohican Casino Resort, American Family Insurance, Miller Lite, and Aaron's Company. Helpful critiques, ideas, great stories, people we should know, the great bar in your town, the fish fry you want to know, the fish boil, anything that you want to reach out to us with, we are happy, we are here. You can be the inputters. We're here to listen. John, I think a lot about summertime and some events that they used to serve beer at. Of course, it's Miller Lite that they maybe don't today. I'm wondering if you know, did they ever, or maybe they do, did they serve beer at the uh, the stockholders meeting at Lambeau? I don't no, know. I, don't I just know. sent my I just sent my proxy back in because I can't make it. Is there a bigger outside of the Packers? Is there a bigger brand associated with Wisconsin than Miller? Mm-hmm. No, it's Miller, and it's been Miller for a really right. long time. It'll always yeah. be Miller. Uh, all right, so next time you're getting ready to enjoy cold ones with your crew at the Packer game or, frankly, uh, at the stockholders meeting, that can happen, go to MillerLite.com and forward slash inside Wisconsin. MillerLite.com forward slash inside Wisconsin to find delivery options near you, or you can pick it up. Literally, that's Miller Lite pretty much anywhere they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. I'll ask Let's say what it is, right? Week. Let's say what it is. Miller Lite is, it's the national game of the week, right? <laughs> it. It's primetime national game. This is not your, is. Local, your local one, local noon kickoff. Miller, no. Miller Lite, national game, primetime. Back with Kenny Bednarik uh, on Inside Wisconsin. It's time for the lightning round, which means Trevor probably has one really sappy question. I already asked it. I was just curious if he went to Lambeau. Uh, so I asked my <laughs> lightning round. You're up, Jay. It's time for the lightning round. Uh, so, uh, Zach, this is exactly what you think it is. We're going to hit you with a bunch of really quick questions. All right. Um, except Trevor doesn't know how to play, so he's going to ask you something, something, <laughs> I don't know, something out of a Hallmark movie here. Usually a Hallmark type of question. Yeah. I wondered if you have embraced – this isn't Hallmark. Have you no. let go of your Illinois roots in terms of teams? Or are you some weird – now I'm a Wisconsinite, but I'm still a Bears fan guy. No, I'm not a Bears fan. I, I oh, good. They, they just – they stink, so – there is that. Yeah. yeah. Is that. Okay. First off, if you were to participate in art, economics, essay, interview, language and literature, math, music, science, social science, and speech, what are you competing in? Oh my gosh, John, I wasn't prepared for this, man. I got 2.5 at Wisconsin. It's an uh, academic decathlon. It's an ap- yeah. That's the academic decathlon. Yes. All right. Nerd city. All right. So uh, you, you run super fast. Do you drive fast? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sadly. All right, give me my favorite event. Pull ball. Great. Do you eat fast? No, I eat pretty slow. Uh, give me one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not steal. Uh, are you a speed reader? No, I'm not a speed reader. Uh, what's a face card worth in blackjack? Ten. Cheetah's the fastest animal uh, on, on the planet. Uh, what's the laziest? Sloth. <laughs> Close. It's actually it's actually a koala. What was Bo Derek's most famous movie? I don't know. Trevor? Ten. 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 Give me an event you'd like to try. I want to try it. I'm gonna try pole vault. How many years in a decade? Ten. Give me the track athlete you'd pay to watch. I would want to watch Bolt when it's prime, like actually be there. How many dimes in a dollar? Ten. Zach Zymick, good guy, bad guy. Zach who? Zach Zymick. <laughs> bad guy. Who's on the face of the dime? Jefferson? FDR. What's on your playlist for a race? R&B, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole. Who's on the $10 bill? Jefferson. Nope, had a musical. <laughs> Alexander Ham- ha- uh, Hamilton. Hamilton. Favorite Wisconsin athlete? Aaron Rodgers. How many pins in bowling? 12. 
What? Ten? Ten. Yeah. Ten. Okay. There's there's a theme here. Finally, you told me when we were sitting there in Eugene about your diet. Um, how hard is it to lay off cheese and ice cream? It's very hard. I think about it every day. <laughs> I was just like, let me get some ice cream. <laughs> So like right, uh, yeah. Every single day, I always want some sweet. Um, but yeah, ice cream—it's a—it's a killer because my stomach doesn't like dairy either. But ice cream, I have to cheat with every now and then. What kind? I mean, Where are we going? Um, I like chocolate cookie dough. Get Kenny, I appreciate Kenny. your time, man. Oh, thanks for having me. Good luck to you. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, drive safely. And you said yeah, you're headed to Monaco next. I actually have uh, Hungary, and then right after that, there's, there's Monaco. So I have two races. Man. So I'm just trying to get ready for that. All How right. does one rehab a toe? How does one rehab? A toe. How do you rehab a toe? Get the toe to bend. I, I was in the sand pits trying to just try to get the brain connecting back to the toe. Um, and just, wow. I don't know, it's a very it's a very tricky uh, thing. Because like I said, with all the work I've done now, I still can't bend it 100%. And it's still That's swollen. That's crazy. Like, just it's winning silver right medals, now. can't bend a toe, no big deal. Do you think? Yeah, no do, you big think deal. <laughs> do you think Trevor knows who Wally Ellison is? Who? Oh, uh, he doesn't even know. I do. I know who Wally is. He went to Damn my it. school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, and he high jumped seven five. Jeez. Yeah, that's crazy. He's hey, crazy. John, I was going to say, two of us have played at uh, athletics in Barron County. I uh, I played in college. I went to a JUCO as well and played up there at UW Barron County. Had a hell of a game. So. Yeah, we're doing oh, it. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. All mm-hmm. right. Travel safe, Kenny. Thanks so much, brother. All right. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it, man. We'll Bye. see you. Finally, decathlon. Deca. The prefix is Latin or Greek? Deca. Greek. It is Greek. There he is. Who knows more about 10 than this guy, Trevor? No, but well, I was I was a good runner up. I finished silver in this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Dude. third's good too, because you get on the podium, man. And yeah. and Zach, it is congratulations to you. It has been it has been a pleasure to watch uh, and cover since you were at Wisconsin. It was cool to be there. It was cool to see you uh, have that moment. Uh, I hope there's more. Hope it's what you got. You got Budapest next year, mm-hmm. and then we go to Paris. So I hope yeah. you're still on those teams. Yeah. Hope you hang in there. And uh, like I said, just great. Happy for you. Happy for your family. Congratulations. Uh, you make us proud. You make Wisconsin proud. You make the U.S. proud. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, that, that, thank you guys so much. Um, that's really, really nice of you guys to say, and I really appreciate you guys having me on. I was hey, double Z, tell mom and dad I said hi. I'll be over for dinner soon. <laughs> right. right now, yeah, I might now have, I'm have to do. I might have this to is... go do the ancestry.com, and, and we'll have to send our results and figure this stuff out. <laughs> I don't want to know. I do not want to freaking know. This was like 20 years ago. The first time I did a show with Scott Van Pelt, so he had hair and and. Uh, my mom watched and she said, hey, who's the new person you're with? Scott Van Pelt. He came over from the Golf Channel. And she goes, I just have one question. I said, okay, what's that? She goes, which one are you? Um, and now, luckily, he's <laughs> lost his hair and wears a pocket square, so we, we're harder to confuse. Yes. But, but you two guys, you walk into a bar, you're going to turn the place upside down. Oh, down. Yeah. Go well, back to work, you. brother. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you. See you. We'll see you. Yeah, see ya. John, I thought you were gentle there, which I really appreciated because let's be honest, I cannot talk or speak to track and field anywhere near you guys. But that was I, I love chatting with them. That was fun. I probably and I probably speak too fluently in track and field, but very uh, fluently. again, like Kenny Harrison, uh, these guys are tr- listen, they're at the world championships. You know who comes to the world right. championships? The world. The best 192 in the world. countries there. You know, it's the Olympics with all the other stuff. It's just the world's greatest track meet. We don't have to worry about kayaking and gymnastics and all those other things, which are great sports. But this is where these athletes and this sport get the limelight, and it's strictly on them. It's every two years. Um, we've pushed back because of COVID. But anyway, every two years. And to be, you know, in the t- over 200 meters, half a lap, there's one dude in the world that's right. faster than Kenny. And Kenny, yeah, that, that – yeah. Hmm. And when you, you know, put it we, that we've way. always thought about whether it was Bruce, now Caitlyn Jenner, or Ashton Eaton, the decathlete is the greatest athlete in the world. And, you know, that used to be the title. You're the world's greatest athlete. 
Okay, so our dude's yep. the third greatest athlete in the world. Both those are pretty heady titles. That's incredible, and yeah. it's awesome that they had time for us, and it's awesome that they're from Wisconsin. And Roots here in Wisconsin. All right, speaking yeah. of Roots, we are back with John Wisconsin. We had deeper Roots with Blaine's Farm and Fleet last episode. We are back to another story of John's childhood. We call it John Wisconsin. Yeah, and I, I don't know that this is any great – riveting story but it is it's what i think of kind of in summer about wisconsin uh and and where i grew up over on beamer street and it was just you know a short walk down the the street to john muir park which was mm -hmm. there and so i got to spend one summer as a parky which i think i i don't know what the actual term is but, <laughs> i was gonna say you know, what is a parky a parky is the person right whether you're at that park or you're at baird park or you're at macarthur park those are the people that supervise what, oh. what happens at the park. I was in charge of kids, basically, every Got day. It. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was me. Kathy Trofka was my partner. And the other gal who lived right across the street, her name escapes me. Oh, my God. She went to um, St. Mary's for college right across from Notre Dame. Anyway, uh, so I spent one summer as the parkie, the guy in the yellow shirt. Make sure you organize the kids. We're playing ping pong tournaments. We're playing softball. We're doing everything. We're running the, the candy store. All of it. Mm -hmm. at, at the park, which was terrific. Great summer job. Bike there every day. End of the year, big, uh, big party. The big, you had mm -hmm. the big, the big end of the year carnival at Joanny's Stadium. Everybody okay. had to set up a booth. You had the big parade downtown. You had to make a float. A lot of stuff going into this. Like the Pink Flamingo. All so right. We had a big flink. We had a big, we had a big castle, big pink castle that we made in, huh. on a hay wagon and drove that down. Then afterwards, you have your game area, and I think ours was some sort of a putt putt contest through the you know through the castle. And we're at Bay Beach, and since this is sort of track and fieldish, uh, there was an old snow fence blocking something. Um, okay. And you know those go up pretty high. And I bet somebody I said, "Well, I can jump over that." And now they're like, "Well, you're you're there's no shot." So we made a little cash up and over, right? Not All a right. problem. Sucker bet for I that. Jumper. Nice. Yeah, sucker bet. Take my money. All right. Uh, so now we're getting done. We're leaving. And uh, so somebody had said, did you really jump over the fence? Of course I did. Sure. You know. <laughs> Want to see it again? Uh, so it turns out after about 48 billion, <laughs> you can't jump over the fence again. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So did we went up. It, did you? We went up. Well, we, I really, some of it, you know, key to the high jump is having the height in the right place. So I think we got up all right. We just didn't quite have the momentum and came down and literally almost tore up the back of my entire thigh. Just oh. scraping because it was one of those old. That was before you had the orange snow fence. It was that those cedar plankings that came through. Oh, yeah. yeah, and just <laughs> down there. And uh, so it's not like breaking a toe like Kenny, but I had a limp for a couple of days and a really <laughs> big red rash. Oh. That, you know, which naturally because it's still summer and your parents are like, uh, "What happened to the back?" You know, and mm -hmm. you just, I just had to confess. Well, at least the part that I didn't quite make it over the fence. I'm not sure I let into all the training that went into it. Um, <laughs> I was going to say. But it, there, there's no better job than being a parky in the summer in Greenville. Like, that is an – like, I've worked at McDonald's. I had to work for my dad, which, uh, no thanks. I didn't want to go <laughs> do construction. Um, but that that's a – go down to – kids, go down to the old um, city building and and sign up to do that job. It's, it's unbelievable. So, I don't the, know that uh, I could fit into my yellow parky shirts anymore, but – Please try. Was, you have one. Fantastic. You still have that. I don't know if I do. I don't. I don't think I have any of those. But I can probably find a picture of me wearing one somewhere. Oh, good, 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 good. Back All right. Well, uh, grateful that the John Wisconsin stories returned, and we know that there are a lot more where that came from. Our thanks to Kenny and Double Z, my twin brother. Your Ten year difference, brother. Clearly a twin brother. Uh, that was a lot of fun to talk to him. Thanks for lining that up, J.A. All right, we are off and running. Packer season starting. Stay tuned. There's some cool guests coming. Until next time, as you were, Wisconsin. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, the University of wisconsin Platteville, Roll Tech, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, American Family Insurance, Miller Lite, and Aaron's Company. Shut up and sit down. 